visualization of standing waves that are electromagnetic requires that we see fields that are invisible and are varying at a frequency higher than we can actually perceive with our eyes. The visualization of waves that are mechanical is easier. Here we've got a spring under tension. The transverse deflections satisfy the wave equation. The object in this demonstration is to see standing waves in the sinusoidal steady state. Professor Zahn will provide a fixed termination at that end, and I'll try and provide the sinusoidal excitation. The first mode's pretty easy. Here's the second mode. A little harder to do. Try that again. At any location, the, the, the response is sinusoidal. We have a null in the middle because a wave incident on that termination comes back and interferes with the incident wave. Here are the actual plates and the short. They're driven at the left by a radio frequency generator. To see the lamp, we've turned the lights down. Next, the generator is turned on. And the lamp is put in place. I'm rubbing my feet on the carpet to generate static electricity to help ignite the lamp. Remember, where there's light, there's an oscillating electric field. The dark areas are therefore where the electric field tends to null. At the right end, we also appear to have a null. Remember, the right end is shorted. We can see the nulls even better if the lights are turned out completely. What we see is the magnitude or envelope of the standing wave of electric field. We can think of the electric field between the plates as being analogous to the deflection of our spring. The deflection, like the electric field, is pinned to zero at the right end. A deflection, like both the electric and magnetic fields, is an oscillating function of time. It remains zero at the null points. We can measure the magnetic field with a one-turn induction coil. The coil voltage displayed on the scope indicates the magnetic field perpendicular to its axis. First, we put the coil at the null in electric field. The magnetic field is indeed tangential to the plates and perpendicular to the direction of propagation. The magnetic field should be a peak here at the null in electric field. Now, moving toward the short, where the electric field is maximum, the magnetic field should null. And then, at the short, it should peak again. Note that the phase shifts by 180 degrees as we pass through the null. Watch the peaks in intensity move by a quarter wavelength as the short is removed. 
again with the short on and with the short removed. It is the electric field intensity that is now the maximum at the right end. We see this better with the lights out. By measuring the distance between nulls in the electric field intensity, we determine the half wavelength. It appears to be about 70 centimeters. Electromagnetic waves propagate on the line at the velocity of light, C. So we can deduce the frequency of the source driving the plates at the left end. The frequency is equal to the velocity of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, divided by the wavelength, about 1.4 meters. So the frequency must be about 210 megahertz. This is the frequency that we should deduce from the oscilloscope trace for the magnetic probe. The period is about 5.2 nanoseconds. The frequency is about 195 megahertz. The agreement with the 210 megahertz we found from the wavelength is consistent with the accuracy of our measurements. In visualizing electromagnetic standing waves, we've used the light illumination to indicate the electric field intensity and the probe to measure the magnetic field intensity. We've observed the distributions of E and H with open and short circuit terminations. 